and I got angry at everybody. Apparently, they shouted, Test your team. Somebody that was shouting is with violence. That's eight years old, my husband, I should be promoting peace. That was shouting in his week of violence, his week of violence, competition. And I'm talking, he said, Refresh your team. The start of parents is up. He doesn't know if he's going, he wants to win. He's fucking go home. It's just not this money that will, that will buy him a house. Why, why do you want him to go? No, anybody can go around. It's not the money that will buy him a house. It's very lucky that I feel you're very rowdy and I do not have spirit to go to our team straight forward. Because you tell me why a 30 year old man cannot understand that in a place filled with children, you're not supposed to be the one that is bringing peace. Last night was really chaotic, guys. <laughs> it was crazy. See, it was just like there was this spirit that got into Big Brother's house. So instead of the housemates to be preparing for their Guinness task, instead of them to be having fun during the task, instead of them to be chilled after the task, guys, it was from one altercation to the other. From the start of the ring of the, of the brief, all through to the end of the task guys it was crazy it was chaotic see the thing was just transferring it was like a chain reaction these two people would have their argument another two will have the altercation guys it was just going and going and going and see at this at that point here yeah, I, I was just here <laughs> guys i was just here i was waiting for when they would get tired when they would get exhausted and then they would just chill and then i'll now sit down and analyze the whole situation guys it was insane and you know the, the most annoying part is the altercations were not really that deep they were not really intense because they, they they died off almost immediately as they started so last night i already did a video sharing all the details of what exactly had transpired between cc and angel there was also cc and doing at some point and then there was venita and prince and guys it did not end there at all because Omashola <laughs> almost went into a crazy shouting spray with Shay, and then there was also Lucy in the picture these two people were seriously locking horns in the kitchen they were not really raising their voices but they were saying a lot yes and then there was also Alex and uh, Mercy Mercy just had to keep a call and you know retreat to the head of house lounge and then there was Prince that was sort of coming into the picture to come defend Alex. Guys, that was such a huge turn off. Yes, it was just a turn off, but a lot of things were happening. And besides that, whew, child. <laughs> Cece and Ike had their time out as usual at night to drag Angel. And you see, it's become a thing where um, before they sleep, these two new, you know, friends, or should I call them allies, would take out time to drag people and you know set their target for the week or for the next day and guys you know what was more interesting to watch last night it was the fact that in the midst of all of that drama all of that chaos alex decided to ignore everybody else that had a role to play in the whole drama right from the arena to focus on villainizing Pere as usual i mean this is something she's been doing since last week or since two weeks ago only intensified from last week yes so she decided to get into full mode of doing that and it was quite disappointing to watch Perez's supposed best friend cross you know stand there and do nothing or even say nothing to defend Perez's honor and then alex had extended that conversation to the guardian guys let's get into this video i'm going to split all of this gist it's actually a lot so i'm going to split all of this gist here and i would tell you um the alex's part then there's going to be another video to speak about the CC and EK's own role. Guys, in fact, there's gonna be more videos. So make sure you stay tuned to my channel today. Do not miss out on any part. So make sure that you watch and catch up on all of these videos so that you catch up on all this juicy tea, all right? And um, if you're new here, please make sure you subscribe, turn on your post notification bell so that you will be able to receive a lot of my videos whenever I upload a new one. I upload multiple videos daily, okay? And um, special greetings to every single one of you. You are welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Gloria Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah, and I am the girl with the T. Please do not hesitate to like this video, 
and feel free to share. Now quickly, let's get into it. So it was all about the Guinness task. Now, I don't know how many of you caught up with that exciting task, yes, but it was quite interesting, very, very entertaining, quite exciting. I thoroughly enjoyed watching the housemates, you know, getting their full element of cheerleading, of singing, of playing football, you know, doing their penalty kicks, guys. It was all exciting. However, there was a lot of chaos. Even Big Brother attested to that, that it was all chaotic and he had to take off a long time to go through you know the clip all over again to check which team to check for which team should emerge the winner because guys everything was very very chaotic and it was courtesy of cross the referee of the evening guys cross did a great job i mean don't get me wrong but he was sort of confused most of the time yes i mean big brother had rules for him but he was sort of confused most of the time and most of the time as well he was not particularly paying attention to his own rules yes i mean the rules that the referee was supposed to use in ensuring a smooth run of the task for the evening of the competition for the evening and you know before the housemates had gone into the arena to play there was already tension you know brewing from the fact that they had already had their internal wars or internal crisis you know or let me say their cross crisis guys it was already crazy so that with that same energy they had gone into the arena to play and it was quite chaotic and i must give kudos to Benita Adekule for uh, an amazing commentary yes i mean they really did great quite entertaining although they were just really shading each other shading each other's teams but it was all for the entertainment and i thoroughly enjoyed it so well done to Benita and Adekunle. Cross equally did a great job. However, for the most part of it, it looked like he was under so much pressure to please a particular team to the point of slighting the other, th other team. And guys, I just did not understand how a referee was wearing dark shades in the arena. Like, how was he supposed to even see what was happening? Yeah, because there was a point where um, the winning team, that's um, the Doyin and Angels team, had actually hit one of the points and he did not see it. And I'm glad that Kimopra had to go and drag, was it Kimopra or Mercy? They had to go and yank off the glasses from his face. That dude, remove these glasses so that you will see clearly. So, a lot of things had happened in the arena. There had been a lot of arguments, you know, as usual, which is quite um, normal in competitions like that, yes. But last night's one was quite intense. You know, also looking at the fact that there was someone like Prince right there in the mix, in the opposing team, guys. We know that wherever there's a task or a competition, Prince is highly competitive and does not mind playing dirty or even getting really upset. And guys, let's not forget that Prince is also a sore loser in a way, mm, looking back at his history during the lockdown season. So everything was pretty much chaotic. And then after the game was over, apparently a lot of things had been said about Cross, you know, the referee not being fair to um, the other team. That's the winning team now. Um, a lot of things had been said. And when they had gone back into the house, People had been saying a lot of things. There was a lot of conversations here and there. Now, fast forward to the conversation between Alex and Cross in the dressing room. From that conversation, it was very obvious that Cross was feeling really bad about the way he had handled, you know, the task of referee. Yes, he was feeling really bad and he felt like going ahead to apologize to members of the other team that he had actually sort of cheated, you know, in the gameplay. But then, Alex was advising him not to apologize to anybody, that he did not owe anybody any apology, that he was only doing what he wanted to do or what he had to do as the referee. And guys, we know that crossing the way is sort of fickle-minded. People can easily get through his mind, you know, to alter his perspective about certain things, which we have actually established already we've had this conversation before doing our our live conversation and we have um given different angles to this particular you know issue with cross especially between himself and parent but just when i thought that alex was going to stay on course and continue with what she was saying automatically just as she's been doing for the past few weeks she just literally dragged parent into the conversation and uh, for instance now Imagine a 38 year old man that does not have sense. Instead of him to be suing for peace, he was talking about, oh, this week is going to be a week of violence. For what? For what? Guys, it was when she mentioned Paris' name that she started, she started getting overly active. She started getting really angry. She was talking. Guys, she was saying a lot of things. And what Alex was basically doing was just pure 
character assassination because for anybody that did not watch that that task play out they would literally buy everything alex was saying hook line and sinker but for me i was quite disappointed because cross was there he was there and alex was saying all what she was saying and cross was smiling and rubbing her back and pacifying her and telling her don't worry now he was not necessarily negating everything alex was saying he wasn't but neither was he defending Perry. But the way he was rubbing Alex's back and telling Alex, hey, don't worry, I know, hey, I know. <laughs> Guys, once again, it was really disappointing. But I wasn't really surprised because um, Cross had said on different occasions during his diary session to Big Brother that even though Perry had apologized to him, he still did not trust Perry. That his instincts still told him, you know, to, you know, not really trust Perry, which is fine. Which is fine because, guys, it's a game. 120 million naira is at stake. So one will not expect Cross, you know, to be 100% sold out to his loyalty to Perry. I'm not even expecting that from him. But I was thinking that, dude, at least you were there in the, in the arena. You were there, you saw everything that happened, you heard everything that happened. So it wasn't like Perry, your friend, was actually attacking you. Because, guys, I watched Perry for the most part of that, that um, task. Perry was very careful with the things he was saying because he was fully aware that, hey, it's his best friend, Cross, that is the referee. So whatever emotions he had, whatever sentiment he had towards how unfairly everything was being played out, he was very careful not to say things that would hurt his friend or even tell negatively against the, the personality, the character of Cross. But right there in that dressing room, Cross kept quiet and allowed Alex the pleasure to continue to defame Perry. Now, as if that was not enough, Alex had continued with her, you know, defamation of Perry in the garden. So there was Dwayne and um, Angel in the garden having conversations about everything because they were equally upset about how everything had actually panned out. That team, in fact, their team was obviously cheated. So they were just having conversations about it. And then Alex had joined them in the garden and was talking about, eh, that eh, it's a game. At the end of the day, they should have fun. They should have fun. And then, boom, before we knew it, she had automatically dragged Perez's name into the conversation again. Still going on and on about, oh, how can a 38 year old man be saying that, yes, eh, this week is going to be a week of violence. Instead of him to be suing for peace, instead of him to be looking for how to force that peace, Agbaya like him, old man, old man, like literally calling, calling him an old man. And I love the fact that um, Angel and Doing, I tried to caution her. They are told her that Alex, you're not being fair. No, you're not being fair. Because you cannot expect everybody to react to situations like you. You cannot expect everybody, you know, to have fun, especially when they've been cheated. So they were trying to make her understand, make her serious. And they even went as far as mentioning that, listen, Pere is up for eviction this week. He's probably scared. And he wants to win the task because of the money involved. Hey, that was where Alex picked it up. Eh, hey, is it the money that's going to build him a house? Is it the money that's going to build him a house? If anybody wins, let them win. Guys, she's just saying a whole lot. And guys, it was quite sad and, you know, pitiful to see Alex in that light because what I could interpret from that whole situation once again, I mean, probably for the hundredth time, you know, this past few weeks, is the glaring reality or the glaring fact that Alex now has this obsession, you know, to defame Perry completely, to sabotage Perry's game, to assassinate Perez's character in the house, to all the housemates and to us, the viewers. For her, every given opportunity, you know, that presents itself is an opportunity for her to execute this her mission. And you see, what she fails to understand is there's a way you go about trying to sabotage someone else in a game like Big Brother Ninja. It could either swing both ways. Your fans will definitely love you for it. But then, there are other neutral bodies amongst the viewing audience that will see you for who you are and they will see how pathetic you are. They will see how weak you are. They will see how weak of a person you are, a weak of a contender you are. And then they will just conclude that, oh, it's because of your fear, your cowardice. That is the only reason why you're not trying to compete healthily. Rather towing this line of toxicity just to score cheap points. 
And guys, for me, every time I listen to Alex yap and yap and yap and rant and rant and rant about Perry, that is how I see her actions. I just see her as this weak contender in the game that has no other way, no other method, you know, to take down Perry, but other than trying to assassinate his character to not just the housemates, but to also us, the viewers. Guys, Perry has got his plans, you know, cut out for Alex this week. I'm going to share all of that on another video. But in the meantime, I would love to hear your thoughts about everything that Alex has been doing so far. Today, by the way, it's by 7 p.m. WAT. We're going to be converging here for our YouTube live stream. Yes. So please make it a date with us. It's going to be a robust conversation. There is a lot to talk about so please make sure you come through but as i've asked already go ahead let me know your thoughts about alex's actions let me know in the comment section below and i'll see you guys on another video soon have an amazing day bye